Hello and welcome back to another opportunity for us to take a look at a deeper dive into the text that we've had from the previous Sunday. This previous Sunday we were listening to the text from the 13th chapter of Luke's Gospel where we heard Jesus lamenting over Jerusalem and using the imagery of a mother hen gathering its chicks under its wings. And I wanted to see if we could maybe think about that a little bit more, um, to think about what it means for us to uh, navigate the tension in our lives of being drawn in by God's love um, and, and wanting to be drawn into it, but at the same time, maybe being resistant to it, whether or not we realize we're actually doing that. So as you think about that imagery of being wrapped under the wings of the mother hen, wonder why it is that we reject God's love. Why would we do that? Do we do it out of pride, out of a sense of being able to handle things on our own? Do we do it because we're afraid? We don't know what it's gonna mean for us to give up control. We are humans after all, and we do really have a thing for being in control. But why is it that we might reject God's love? Why would we be resistant to it? It's a wonderful thing. It's all encompassing and it keeps us safe. It provides us with protection. Why in the world would we be resistant to it? Just some food for thought there. We wonder also, what's difficult about what Jesus says and does? And what does that maybe have to do with how we respond and whether we Um, sort of accept what Jesus says or want to reject it. And I wonder also what pulls us away from the protection of God's love, from being under those wings, if we carry through with that image. What kinds of things are strong enough to pull our attention and our focus away from something so wonderful and nurturing as God's love? We know that God collects the brood when danger threatens. That's what happens in the animal world, right? The, the mother hen gathers the chicks when danger comes around. God does that for us. So what in the world could possibly send us running in the other direction or pull us away from that? These are things that are worth thinking about. One biblical scholar in a commentary about this text says, evil threatens in the form of a fox. Of course, here we have uh, the fox being associated with Herod, but evil threatens in the form of a fox and the mother hen laments because her young are exposed, but will not accept her protection. What more can the hen do but stand up to the fox and seek to shelter and protect her young. Alas, what will become of the young if they do not accept the shelter of their mother's wing? That does feel a bit convicting if we think about the fact that there are times when we just do not accept that shelter and turn away. We know that that's part of just being who we are, being humans, that we tend to think that we can handle things on our own and don't always need to rely on God, that we are independent operators and that we're just fine on our own. But things happen and we sometimes find ourselves thinking that we're adrift. We're never truly alone though, but I think that particular comment from the scholar is something that definitely can give us something to think about. You know, the hen can only stand up to the fox and try to take care of her young. That's what she does. That's who she is. And 
as young, we hopefully will want to come and seek the shelter of her wings and not put ourselves in peril. Another thing that we can think about to tie into our lessons from this past Sunday is to think about who Jesus is. Jesus, we know, is the Son of God. We know who Jesus is. That's a basic thing. That's a um, early on in Sunday school kind of lesson. But if we're going to take a deeper dive into this during our Lenten um, time period, we want to think about what Jesus really means for our lives. We can... We can see ourselves, hopefully, in these encounters with Jesus. We wonder, will we stay with Jesus or will we fall away? You remember that Jesus in this text we had from Sunday is almost to the middle portion of the um, travel narrative where he is on his way to Jerusalem. Remember that there is no way for him to not go to Jerusalem because that is his act of obedience. There is a uh, a necessity of him going to Jerusalem and following what God would have him do. So we think about this mustness, if you will, that's going on, that he must go to Jerusalem, that he must follow along on this pathway that's set out before him. And we wonder, will we stay with Jesus? Can we stay with Jesus along the way when things are going to be difficult? Will we be pulled away? Can we be pulled away? Will we maybe shy away from the challenges that may come Will we last? Will we endure? Let us remember that we are called to walk with and follow in the footsteps of Jesus. As you think through some of these questions that I've shared with you today, I just encourage you to really let them sit in your heart. Think about what your answers to these questions might be. Why is it that we reject God's love and why are we resistant to it? What is difficult about the things that Jesus says and does? What is it that pulls us away from the protection of God's love? What does Jesus mean for our lives? Will we stay with Jesus during all of these encounters, particularly in this travel narrative and leading on into Jesus' time in Jerusalem, or will we fall away? My prayer is that you would have meaningful time in thought and reflection about these questions, that they may enhance your journey as we continue our way through this Lenten season. God bless you.